Ahoy and welcome! In this series, I am doing a deep dive in certain heritage ship cosmetics that are available in Sea of Thieves. Aside from just looking beautiful, quite a few of them are inspired by past rare video games. These ship cosmetics are available at the Pirate Emporium and have the common theme of being really expensive. In this video, we will have a look at the Paradise Garden ship set, which is based on the Viva Piñata franchise. One of my favorite new franchises launched by Rare during their Xbox 360 period. And before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe, it really does help the channel and I would greatly appreciate it. So let's have a look at the ship and all its references. And as always, let's take a look into the franchise first. The Xbox 360 period was a rough time for Rare fans. Both Cameo and Perfect Dark were fine games, but nothing more. And the less said about their later 360 games, the better. However, some light was to be found, and it came in the form of cute animals filled with candy. Viva Piata, in a nutshell, is all about making the perfect garden to attract the species you want. Once you have done that, you make them drunk on love candy so you can breed more and more. And yes, there is a lot of incest involved, but they do a cute little dance instead of, you know, getting dirty, so it's, it's all good. Once you've collected enough, you sell them all so you can buy more expensive stuff to attract more exclusive piñatas, and you do it all over again. But you know, you can play the game however you want really. If you just want a flower garden filled with bugs and birds, you can do so. And just like Sea of Thieves and you know other rare games, the developers did most of the voices for this game themselves. The most obvious one is Louise O'Connor, who is amazing and is voicing Leafus. But all the animal voices were also voiced by the team. <coughs> And as part of the marketing for this game, some real piñatas were made, and yeah, they look awesome. Best part of this game is, you know, you can get hippos. More specifically, a Shippopotamus, which is obviously my favorite piñata. And there's even an in-game cutlass belonging to Captain Blubber that you can use as a garden ornament. So yeah, I can't possibly hate this game. The only real downside is that you will probably be playing this game with your laptop or mobile phone next to you since a lot of stuff is trial and error, and not the fun kind. Like feeding your worm a watercress seed to turn it green might seem obvious, but feeding a lickitoad a nightshade berry then hitting it with your shovel to make it evolve in a lickitoad is less so. Sure the game gives you hints, but not often and not always the hints you want. The game also had a sequel called Trouble in Paradise, which is basically a big quality of life patch with more piñatas added. I'm not a fan of collecting piñatas in the desert and icy regions in this game. The piñatas are fine, but the process of catching them is just boring and slows the game down. However, this is the go-to version. It is the most complete version and even gives you some smaller goals to go for something that was missing a bit in the first one. There's also a small yet devout group of players that desperately want a Viva Piata 3. And I do get that. Trouble in Paradise was a nice improvement over the first one, but there is still so much more potential for this franchise. More streamlined menus, choosing biomes, landscaping options to make hills, rivers and waterfalls are some of the possibilities that come to mind. Will we ever get a Viva Piata 3? I don't think so. But I certainly wouldn't mind. Not gonna happen. Viva Piata also saw a release on the Nintendo DS called Pocket Paradise. Even though I do own this game, I have yet to play it. But since I'd rather experience games on a big television screen, I probably won't. I do know a lot of people swear by this version, since its controls are great for managing your garden and interacting with your piñatas. The final game I want to quickly mention is Party Animals, which you should avoid. But if you still need your Viva Piata fix, you can always watch the cartoon show. 
which, similar to the Pokemon series, explains the game mechanics to you while you watch an episode. Everyone knows that when Horstachios eat blackberries and daisies, they turn into zombies! It's obviously made for kids, but to be honest, it ain't bad. So if you feel like having your own piñata garden, you are in luck, because both mainline games are available on Rare Replay. But like I said before, my advice is to skip the first one and go straight into Trouble in Paradise. So with this quick overview behind us, let us now focus on the ship set. I feel I say this on every deep dive, but the Paradise Garden ship set is also one of my favorites. We have some colorful ships in the game, but nothing can beat this rainbow explosion. I personally like to put these cosmetics on a sloop. I just think it's funny to dominate the server and sink everybody while also looking cute. So let's start with the hull. The color pattern screams piñatas, and even the bowsprit is called a deep purple, which I like. Its description reads, Pirate fables tell of a distant paradise inhabited by candy-filled creatures. Pirates drink a lot. A funny flavor text that doesn't need any further explanation. The capstan adds some golden highlights and features a pink animal with some blue gems that function as its eyes. The description reads, may your ship be blessed by the aura of this legendary, cute and slightly scary bush beastie. And this is a reference to the piñata Galagugu, which in turn is based on the real-life animal called Galago, a nocturnal animal found in Africa, which also goes by the name of a bush baby, or Nagapi in African. The wheel is actually modeled after one of the more exclusive types of piñata called Dragon Ash, a dragon-like piñata with four eyes, wings and multiple limbs. An absolute stunning design in my opinion. The description reads, a wheel inspired by the legend of Paradise Garden may it steer you to trouble three times, which is an obvious reference to trouble in paradise. So let's move over to the cannons. And these actually hide two references. The more noticeable one is the design of a Swanana piñata on the sides. But the gold and purple design of the actual cannon is modeled after the Kenyatta, a device used to launch piñatas to parties all over the world. The description is an additional reference to this device. It reads, these cannons are almost too much fun to sink ships with, if only they could launch candy. The flares look simply amazing, but like with most flares, they hinder my PvP, so I sadly don't use them on my adventures. And as a side note, I hope this gets fixed in the future, because I do believe flares can actually help PvP when designed well. The description is pretty obvious and reads, A colorful, papery burst from your cannon packs a party punch into each and every shot. The normal sails feature a colorful zigzag pattern and its description reads Nobody will miss your ship with sails like this. Do you feel the urge to party? The collector's sails add even more lines of color and is accompanied with this description. These bright colors pay homage to the mythical Paradise Garden, where it's always party time. And this is a reference to the introduction song when you started the game. It's party time! Also worthy to note is that the zigzag pattern on the collector's sails depict the exact same zigzag pattern as found on a fudge hawk, another one of my favorite type of Miata. The flag features a similar pattern and features another obvious description. It reads, this flag may give people the impression that you are a fun-loving party pirate. Own it. And finally, let's have a look at the figureheads beginning with the normal one. Its description reads, A shipwright's impression of the majestic creatures that roam a mythical paradise island. And there are actually three of these creatures depicted, being a buzzagum and pretstill to the sides, and a horstachio in the middle. The collector's figurehead is one of my favorites. 
The eyes of the mammals and the wings of the bee create this blue-white glow when you are sailing in the dark. And the horse even gets some fiery manes. Absolutely stunning. But the best part is the addition of a rainbow around the figurehead. Yeah, this addition puts other figureheads to shame. Its description reads, Bring the creatures of legends to life with this marvelous multi-species figurehead. Another fitting description. Like always, I hope you are now a bit more familiar with other rare games. And hey, don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. It is simply the easiest way to help the channel out. It really is. And also let me know if you would like to see a return of Viva Pinata on the current generation. Uh, I myself am extremely happy with the course Rare is currently sailing, but it would be nice to see some of their older franchises make a return. Either way, thanks for watching another deep dive and I wish you happy sailings, whether it be on an overpriced expensive ship set or not. Alright, see you in the next video and take care. And to help, they urinate on their hands for that extra stickiness.